So what do we know about what is going on in long COVID so far? As we talked about, the condition can manifest in different ways in different people. So some of these theories will apply to one person and another one will apply to the other. We'll also find some of these theories become um, put to the side or confirmed more thoroughly once more research comes out. So at the moment, a lot of them are just theories, but we can draw a lot of knowledge and guidance from them. So firstly, there is some evidence to suggest that mitochondrial dysfunction is underlying in the mechanism of long COVID. We know that infection and the resulting inflammation from infection can affect the mitochondrial function in the body. This will show up as energy deficits and especially in those organs that really require lots of energy such as the brain and nervous system that's where symptoms are going to start appearing because of that lack of energy. So it makes sense to us why people struggle with brain fog, um, dizziness, headaches in these types of conditions. We also know the virus can actually hijack the mitochondria of a cell for its own replication and starve the cell of the energy it actually needs to function properly. Another theory is brainstem dysfunction. This theory hypothesizes that the brainstem has undergone damage. And this is because of the relatively high expression of ACE2 receptors in the brainstem, and also the fact that it's very susceptible to damage from systemic inflammation. This area of the brain is responsible for taking care of breathing, cardiac function, digestion, and neurological function. And this makes sense why some people are experiencing POTS-like symptoms, heart palpitations, breathing difficulties, and digestive upset. Another theory that's become popular over time is that of mast cell activation. And this is because of the very similar symptoms we tend to see between a condition called mast cell activation syndrome and long COVID. These similar symptoms can include headaches, brain fog, respiratory difficulties, GI upset, as well as a number of other symptoms. The mast cell is an immune cell involved within the immune response to an infectious trigger or other triggering events. And the mast cell is something that will typically release things like histamine as well as cytokines, which really mediate the inflammatory response to these triggers. There's also evidence to suggest that an autoimmune process may be occurring in long COVID. There's been a correlation observed in patients that have had previous infections from a SARS-CoV-2 and higher levels of autoantibodies in the body. There is also the theory of viral persistence. This theory theorizes that the virus or parts of the virus may remain within the body after the acute infection is over. This may be that the virus is remaining dormant within cells and hidden and becomes reactivated among certain circumstances or fragments of the virus that have been previously wiped out from the immune system still exist within the body and are causing immune reactions. This may be a reason why people that are administered a vaccine when they have long COVID, we tend to see about 30% of them improve and it may be that the immune system is being upregulated again to search out existing and remaining parts of the virus in the body to then therefore completely wipe it out. Then there's the awakening dormant pathogens theory. This theory suggests that the SARS-CoV-2 and acute infection may have overwhelmed the immune system so that it can no longer keep under control pre-existing pathogens that were actually existing in the body before COVID occurred. And finally, it has been observed that SARS-CoV-2 and the acute infection has a significant effect on our microbiome, which is the collection of bacteria that sits within our gut. This is vitally important when it comes to the immune system and our immune response to viral triggers because our microbiome has a significant impact on regulating our immune response and inflammation within the body. Therefore, it has also been shown that people with a more varied, healthier balance of a microbiome pre-infection had a better response to the virus. So what can we glean from the evidence and knowledge that we know so far? We know that a number of these mechanisms are at play with people with long COVID. 
There are also many healthcare practitioners in the world that know how to navigate through problems such as this. Functional medicine practitioners in particular really know how to navigate through chronic illness and approach people with these problems alongside their medical management. However, less can be said when it comes to chronic illness from a purely pharmacological approach. And this is because it doesn't take into consideration and address the many lifestyle and significant environmental factors that play a huge role in influencing someone with these problems.